Greetings, mortals. I have finished assembling and painting 90% of the Warcry starter set terrain. And a few weeks ago, when the terrain came out, a wonderful video created by Blackjack Legacy kind of helped pinpoint the particular construction of the terrain set in order to maximize the usability for the terrain cards that come in the starter set. Now, I was excited to see that. I was grateful to see that, but I've seen a lot of consternation in that as well. Um, kind of a pressure to get that just right. Well, I had a little bit of something to add on to that, uh, to be able to assemble the terrain in such a way that not only could you comply with the kind of starter cards or with the terrain cards, uh, the maps that are drawn on those, but you could be, you could have more flexibility with using the terrain in other scenarios, other setups or customizing how you put it together. Um, and making it easier, more compact to put away either at home in a storage bin or in a box to take to the store when you want to play with friends. So let's go to the hobby bench. I will show you how I've put my terrain together and I hope that it helps you put yours together in a way that satisfies both the cards and the other practical kind of requirements of having uh, terrain either at home or at the gaming store. So, come on over. All right, we're here at my hobby desk, and I want to show you, as I said, how I've assembled my Warcry starter set terrain, both to bring me a lot of variety uh, while still being able to achieve any of the terrain cards available in the terrain decks uh, for this set, and provide easier storage when I'm taking this to and from the game shop or setting it up uh, or st storing it away here at home. So the first thing I have here on the table is obviously all of the scatter, incidental, barricades, obstacles, etc. Now these were a lot of fun and I still have a little bit of work to do on the metals um, and just to kind of continue to bring it to life. But uh, I was fairly pleased with how my Sunset Standstone worked well next to this kind of uh, greenish um, vibe of the, the, the vine, sorry, whatever this wood, gnarly wood is, um, just to add some variety and to, to give it, I guess, let it stand out on its own. Um, I was able to get some decent effects with using my worn wood uh, recipe on these planks while using this, um, you know, either this is burnt or it's just some sort of gnarly chaos wood uh, that's a part of this. And uh, they're certainly um, disparate. Uh, if I wanted to, I can go back and pick out all of the cording, etc. We'll see what we decide to do. Uh, but I'm fairly happy with all of this. Now, the things that you'll, you will notice missing from here are the other, besides the fountains, the other obstacle pieces. Now, that's because I did something a little bit different, and that had to do with my stairs. Instead of just leaving my stairs separate, which I wanted to do, or worrying about magnets, I glued the obstacle pieces to the bottom rung of my stairs, or bottom step, and that was a fairly good hold. And I use the sprue to give it the right height for use with the terrain. And I just left it there uh, to give it as much stability when my or other people's models are going up and down the stairs. So I will be able to show you how that affects or how that works a little bit later. Now, I don't have, if by doing this, I don't have uh, this terrain piece available for the terrain cards, which is one of the points I was trying to make, but there are plenty of other kind of things that you can use along the way to just kind of scatter in there from other terrain sets or even using, um, you know, a piece like this instead of that, which is a good set size to, um, uh, to stand in for those pieces. So of all the things to, to uh, sacrifice, this is what I sacrifice in order to give myself some more variety, more um, ability with the stairs. So I will actually show you that next. Let me get these things off the table and show you the bell tower and the platform on top of the Sigmar head. All right. So the two stair pieces in the instructions are described as being uh, kind of associated with these two pieces of terrain, uh, the bell tower 
and the Sigmarite head. Now, a couple of things that I did different when assembling this um, was, first of all, um, as you saw in one of my previous videos, I didn't put the stairs on here. And in hindsight, part of me wanted to uh, possibly use this with the stairs to keep them upright. But I think that would have, you know, that would have left made this be able to go through for the purposes of kind of walking, etc. But I think this adds so much character to this, even if there's no stairs attached with it. So as you can see, um, I did both uh, stairs with these, uh, with those extra set it, sets of uh, um, obstacles or scatter terrain. Um, but when it comes to this, um, it slides right in there and works just great, but also can be used here on the side um, or in other combinations with the stairs now. Similarly, I can add the stairs over here and it works great with that. Now, the thing I did differently with this piece is I also did not attach uh, the platform to the head, uh, which the instructions, I believe, show you too, but there are some terrain cards that have the head uh, kind of by itself on the, on the table, which is fine. Um, I actually, if the head's on the table, I don't, wouldn't see it to be that big of a difference to have the platform on there. It just adds another platform to the field. Um, but I also did not attach this uh, one piece to the very end and glue it in. Uh, that way, similarly over here, I could use one stairway here, and I could use another stairway here for more variety uh, on the tabletop. And I could always use this as kind of a door or gate to bust through or, or whatnot uh, throughout the games. So this is how I assembled the bell tower and the head platform uh, to give myself, again, more flexibility and more ability. You know, you can imagine, too, when putting these away or when packing these away, being able to separate these out, make them a little bit more compact uh, is, is helpful. All right. Now we're going to get into the main body pieces and I'll show you more how I uh, kind of did them a little bit differently to add variety or to give myself flexibility and to help storage and packing away. Okay, these were the first two ruins pieces that were shown on Blackjack Legacy's uh, video, Stop Before You Assemble Your Terrain, and uh, followed those to a pretty strong T. My instructions gave me quite a bit of those steps, but there were a few pl places that were a bit more confusing and having that video and uh, has been super helpful. And I've been able to pass that along to other people uh, as they've been uh, kind of tackling their terrain. So you can see um, this piece is probably the largest footprint of all of them. You can see my sandstone sunset um, terrain painting. Um, and again, I've still got a little bit more work on metals, etc. Um, one of the things that I did differently, again, oh, and I'll just say this over here is the ruins number two and is a bit more compact and small. And I've really enjoyed how that kind of changes on the battlefield, being able to, you know, in some cases it's deployed in a corner and things are kind of deployed inside of it and they have to get out of it, which can be really interesting for slowing down faster moving models. Anyway, uh, so the major thing I did differently with these was... I kept these inserts unglued. Now, uh, mm -hmm. I had originally, as I started going through, this was one of the first pieces I put together. Uh, I did glue this together, and I somewhat regret it at, at, at the time, being able to pull this apart and do different things with it. But this piece standalone is nice because it can stand on its own. And what that gives me is a number of uh, kind of flexibility points in being able to later on stack this for different kinds of uh, kind of terrain scenarios. But it, in addition, if this was um, glued on, this becomes the full fr fo footprint of this piece, and that's how it needs to be stored. But by having these separate, I can actually either stack them together like this, or I can stack them like this, as I'm putting them away, 
and that just makes them much more compact as a piece uh, for storage, transportation, etc. Now this piece I did similarly where I kept this piece out so that I could potentially um, choose to swap out and add these other terrain features just to create another, I guess, variety of buildings and scenarios and uh, kind of combinations uh, so that I don't get bored with this. So I don't have, uh, so I have just have more options and things to play with. Um, all right, so that's these two. The next two pieces Similarly, this archway goes away or can, can come back on. And they go on much easier than I just showed you. Trying to do this with a camera is a little bit more difficult. And similarly here, we can take that out. Now, as I was showing you, it makes for some really nice combinations and heights and changes of things. as you're moving things around and creating your boards. One more quick thing, um, I guess I'll share then too, is that, that, that just, as I was saying, makes it really easy to stack and move your terrain around or uh, pack it up when it's time to put it in a box or put it in a bag or stow it away. One of the interesting things I found was in looking at this train piece here and that the other gate piece here and you can see it both here and here these two pieces but that these two pieces come together and could be glued but as much as anything can easily be set up as part of a congruent wall because those two pieces fit together. There are some uh, similar cases like that in the Azerite Township uh, that I might show on another video, but while not a big thing, uh, if you were to get another set of this terrain, I think there's a lot of variety to work with. And I did just so happen to get my hands on to get my hands on one spruce set of sprue number two and put together this video. Sprue number two has almost all of these gated pieces. It has a large and a small platform and it has the archways. What was also cool about being kind of, I had just this one sprue, I didn't have anything else to combine it with, so I need, wanted to put together something just using that sprue, is that these two platforms work well together. They join, they match. They are two parts that have been severed from the whole if you want to assemble them that way. And again, what I'm able to do with this piece and with these separations is kind of create a more interesting kind of gateway gatehouse coming in or a kind of entryway um, we can put uh, more stuff on top of it uh, and uh, make it more interesting again for the tabletop for creating a space um, an environment in which people once lived and is now in ruins so um, yeah this is kind of my uh, the way i've come to assemble the starter set terrain to give myself the ability to build all of the terrain cards, to give myself more flexibility so that I can uh, grab, make variety and uh, make it my own, create environments and spaces that work for me, and uh, make it easy to pack away, be more portable, and uh, take up less space in my bags or in my crates, uh, either at home or at the game store. I hope that um, me walking through how I've assembled and put things together helps you as you're embarking on assembling this terrain set. Don't be daunted. Don't be uh, uh, worried about the outcome. 
if there was one card I would do without, it would be the terrain card, and I would just set things up the way I want, or create a, a way to um, have uh, my opponent and I set up alternating, each grabbing a piece until we're done. Um, there's lots of ways to do that. Um, but the go and watch Blackjack Legacy's video on stop before you assemble your terrain so you can see kind of the right pieces to put together to uh, fit that. Take a look at this for what you can leave unglued so you give yourself more flexibility. Um, and I hope that a few of my cheats or alternates where I've sacrificed um, the um, scattered terrain to make my stairs more uh, stable uh, could help you uh, do the same and get a lot more joy and uh, longevity out of your terrain. Thanks again for watching.